Hey guys, Pastor Jürgen here. I'm so glad you're tuning into one of our powerful messages that is guaranteed to absolutely elevate your life to another level. At Awaken, we only want to preach fresh, real, powerful to help you grow stronger in your walk with God, develop your faith so you can take more territory. I'm praying that God blesses you and enriches your soul as you listen to this amazing word from God. God bless you. Bible in a year, this is what it looks like. How many of you have a, one of these? <laughs> That's interesting, just the first two rows. And the high shirt people. The high team. High team in the first two rows. The rest of you just don't know what it is probably, but every year our, our church, Pastor Jurgen, it'd be so annoying all the time sitting down having a coffee with him. He'd just be dropping scripture left and right. And I'm like, dude, I've been a Christian my whole life. What are you doing? He goes, oh, I just read my Bible every day. Yeah. I'm like, man, I get stuck. And he goes, no, I switched over to this Bible in a year plan. As soon as I started doing that, first year was rough. Second year got better. Third year, rocking it. Now it's just been kind of like the nature of I'm um, pumped because now, you know, you're going through it six, seven times now. So we decided last year to take our whole church on it. And we had a, we had a Bible, but it was kind of clunky. It's like driving like an old Jeep. That the, ding, 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 ding. Maybe that's just how my wife drives it. But, I mean, uh, she's not here. I can say that. Next service, I won't say that. Yeah. And some of you are judging me right now, but no, that's called wisdom. Okay. So the Bible in a year, this is our new one, way better. Way better this year. And man, streamlined. So the rest of you, I will tell you, man, we have them right back at the table. Pick it up, go through it. You don't have to get black and white OCD. I know if I was talking to my wife right now, she'd be like, oh my gosh, I'm already so far behind. Just start where we're at. Okay, we'll get you through, you're getting to the good stuff. No one wanted to go through Levitical law. We're all suffering for Jesus, but you just like, now you get to start in numbers and it's pretty cool. Like today was like, you know, talking about the spies. You know, 12 were sent out, 10 came back and threw up on their leader. Two came back with a positive report. Let me just teach you something real quick. Not my notes, but this is for somebody. If you are always just complaining and throwing out about what the future holds for you or what you see, you're like, oh my gosh, there's so much. Let me just tell you, the future doesn't look good. Because all those 10, God's like, man, I'm so tired of hearing them complain. I'm gonna let them just, they're gonna die out in the wilderness. But the two that came back with said, man, that land that we're taking, that SLC, I like it. I like it. When I start people here and complain about California, I'm like, oh, get out of here, man. You're, you're not gonna make it here anyways. Just leave now. <laughs> or just look for California and let's pray New Cellini right out of office. Yes! And guess what? We'll figure out the situation, but let's see all the goodness that California is, not all the craziness. And I would just say and start speaking life over SLC so you don't end up crazy like California. Yes. Trying to help you. Yes. Trying to help you. I want you to understand that the church got California where it is because they didn't say anything. It's the church's fault, which means people are the church, so it's the Christian's fault California got to where it is. They became passive, they became apathetic. And I'm gonna tell you, I am nervous SLC coming down to emerge every time, because if it drops below 60 in San Diego, it's like all the men start to wilt. And then I just coming up here to toughen up. I was just gonna be like, babe, I'm getting out of my underwear. I'm gonna do an ice bath in my front porch right now, in three feet of snow. Because the merge is coming and I gotta make sure this beard's keeping my cheeks warm. So you people are tough up here. You're gonna come down and probably be, it's gonna be 35 at night. You're gonna be sweating. Anybody I see in shorts walking around with no shirt on, I'm like, that's SLC. Boise's not there yet because they're all, you know, imports from San Diego. So they're all there crying every week. Like, it's so cold. Oh, we're coming back. I'm like, oh, dear Lord. They all trade in their cars, got butt warmers on their seats. And, you know, full, you, you people are tough as they get. So the, the title of my message is called Gut Punched. And I was gonna preach, hopefully you go listen to my last one. I've, I felt like I wanted to preach it here, but that's what I wanted, not what God wanted. And that was Secrets of the Garden. And so you can go on our Awaken app and you can listen to that. And I think it's a timely word for our region and, and, and just our campuses, if you will. But 
uh, I really felt like God wanted me to share, you know, coming around what gut punch looks like. Can you get gut punched, get back up and keep going? And I think it's just really important because, you know, I could sit here and blow sunshine <laughs> at you all day long and go, woo, leave you here all happy clappy. But I feel like there's a resiliency up at this campus. And I feel like God has already forged you in such a way, but now it's time to turn it up, level up, and get over certain things and let the past be the past and step into the greatness that God has for you in the future. So I want to read just two verses because um, as I wrote this message pretty much last week, about Tuesday, Wednesday, and then he really started adding to it. So I'm going to throw in the added to it. So I had my nice little message here, and then all the notes on the back are what God started saying in the last two nights while I've been here. So how we merge these? I have no idea, but you know what? I trust God, so I'm, I'm good for it. So uh, I do wanna start off with Bible, and I wanna come around 1 Peter 5.10. And I want, I want you to hear this because I think it's really important. This is to the elders and the flock. That means to the influencers in here and to the rest of you, okay? We, we are, you have good shepherds. So I get to be, part of that shepherding with you. You have the incredible Tuggles that, man, are called to lead this army, to multiply, to do radical things. But some of you are already completely bought in. You would be the elders. That word kind of freaks me out a little bit. I'm not really even sure. But I'm gonna tell you, you are the influencers of the house. But let me tell you, to the influencers among you, I appeal as a fellow influencer and a witness of Christ's sufferings, who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care. Watch over them. Not because you must, but because you are willing. As God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve. Not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to your leaders, to those that are all in. This is discipleship. All of you clothe yourselves with humility towards one another because God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Who wants favor today? Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. That means quit stressing. I just gotta tell you that. It says cast all, not some of it, not a little bit, not most of it. Cast all your anxiety, all your stress, all your worry, all your fear on God. How many knows he can handle it? My question is, you know, worry is paying rent on something you'll never own. Why are we worried all the time if you trust God? And the question is, then, if you are worried, then it means you don't trust God. And let's figure out how to get your trust up, how to get your faith up, how to get restored trust in God. I'm going to tell you, I've been there, how much he loves us. That's unconditional love. Some of you maybe have never felt unconditional love. You don't know that, but God's not mad at you. I don't care what you've heard preaching in the past, what, you, what you're understanding, your revelation. If God was mad at you, he wouldn't send his most precious son yes. to die on the cross in exchange for your freedom. Yes. It's a free gift whether you decide to choose Jesus or not, that's up to you, but God loves you. So good. He's for you, he wants to bless you. It's really hard for some people to wrap their, health, their, their head around it because the devil's lied to you so long that you suck that you actually believe it now. You believe that all these things that are happening to you, maybe the tripped up, the setbacks, the stumbles, whatever, is because God's not for you. That's a lie from the devil. The devil is a liar. The word of God says so. He is the father of lies. He's also known as the great deceiver. How many of you know the devil's a deceiver? Okay, let me just tell you, a lot of people don't know that because he's so good at it, you don't even know you're being deceived. That's how good he is. 
He's convinced you he's not deceiving you. No, go ahead, walk right off that cliff. If you look at where our kids are at today, they're so deceived, they're so confused. And yet, if we decide to be quiet parents because we you know, want to respect, respect choices, then guess what? We're going to get what we get. We actually have to be vigilant. Listen, I'm going to finish this. Be alert and sober of mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. If you're being devoured by fear, devoured by anger, devoured by bad choices, devoured by addiction, devoured, it's the devil devouring you, not God setting you up to trip you up. God's just waiting for you to decide, I'm done with the liar, I'm I'm done with this, and I wanna be discipled. I wanna get more of the word in me than the world in me. And I'm gonna tell you, that's your choice. Because every day you're being programmed. Every single day. And my question is, what is programming you? We have 60,000 thoughts a day. 93% of those thoughts are the same thoughts you had yesterday. That means only 7% are new thoughts. And my, my question is, are you getting them from Instagram, Facebook, the news? Or are you getting them from the word of God? If you're gonna renew and rewire and take every thought captive, we gotta start with where we're at. If you don't like where you're at, you better change the thoughts so you get something new. The Bible's trying to hook us up, but it's amazing how we're getting influenced the other way and we don't take this serious. Be alert and sober of mind. The enemy, the devil, is coming to take you out. Resist him, standing firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of all sufferings. Let me tell you, resist him, stand firm in faith. The Bible says that if you resist the devil, he will flee. The devil shows up to everybody. He's that arrogant. In the wilderness, he showed up to Jesus three times and tempted him. The son of a king, Jesus, He's coming to say, I can give you all this. Just bow down. Even tried saying, does the word really say? Questioning, questioning what Jesus knew. And he always just said, get out of here. Gave him the word. The word said, boom, unleashed the stone to the giant, which is the word of God. My question is today, how many of you are sitting there going, oh, what does the word say? What does the word say? Okay, maybe I will. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna tell you something. How many of you have 13, 14, 15, all the way up to 18-year-old kids? Go ahead and raise your hand. Okay. Responsibility. I am meeting more 13-year-olds that are Sally's, weak sauce, young men that I would love to train. You wanna know why we have a merge? I really believe it's for the rite of passage. And I know last year they're like, oh, that's so easy. And we listen. I was sitting on in the background just listening to all these, you know, these like 17, 18 year olds roll through that rite of passage going, that was so easy. I'm like, oh, yeah, he's not humble. Taking notes right now. <laughs> I said, that rite of passage is a rite of passage. And I watched a lot of young, arrogant kids coming through there. I'm like, okay, so they'll be back this year, and I can't wait to see what they're doing this year. <laughs> I have every name on a list. And I'm just going to walk beside him. I said, you remember last year? How you like it this year? Oh, yeah? Oh, you're going to throw up? Why are you crying? You want your dad? You want your dad? Yeah. I'm going to be handing out straws. You know why I'm handing out straws this year? So they can suck it up. Because you know what? If we sit there and baby them, they don't get humble. See, in Jewish cultures, in Spartan cultures, in gladiator culture, when you turn 13, they would send you out to hunt. If you don't hunt and you don't bring back a kill, they said you're not ready yet to be a man. Jewish traditions, they have the bar mitzvah, the bar mitzvah, and that's the rite of passage from a woman, from a girl to a woman, from a boy to a man. There's no such thing as teenagers. Then why are we calling, show me one word in the Bible that says teenager. But yet we are prophesizing teenager and they act like a teen, which is a worldly term. So why don't we just hand them on a plate over the devil? Let them get all messed up and confused. Or we train them up. 
My kids at 13, I'm already ready. They're already learning how to tithe now, but I'm gonna teach them. Let's come on, let's go make some money. Let's make some money. Let's tithe off your money. It's just teaching them responsibilities. I'm not gonna kick them out. I'm not gonna be a slave driver, but what I am, I am gonna use their creative thoughts, their creative alignments that God has given them to propel them into something great. I'm gonna teach them at 13, because if I train them up at 13, at 14, they're not gonna be distracted by the Instagram. They're not gonna be distracted by these other things. You know why they're distracted now? They're bored. So then they're confused. So Proverbs 15, 31 through 32 says this. Whoever heeds life-giving correction will be at home among the wise. Who wants to be a wise? All of us, I hope. Those who disregard discipline despise themselves, but the one who heeds correction gains understanding. My wife and I go to Dr. Brian four times a year. He's our family and marriage counselor. He comes to our church. He preaches now all over the place. He's one of my favorites, but I'm the one that brought him because guess what? I hired him a long time ago. I have maybe, I don't know, I at least had to pay for his car by now. <laughs> and I'm grateful. It's an investment into my marriage. We go four times a year. And then guess what? Every once in a while, stuff comes up. I don't know why. And then we gotta go a couple weeks in a row. I was like, where did that come from? Devil, you're a liar. But we're gonna work it out while we're here. I'm not gonna leave any stone unturned in my marriage if that's my greatest wealth. I wanna make sure I'm investing into it. So I'm gonna put my mammon, my money that I work hard to invest into my marriage. You know, these are the things that we have to do, but there is a process of discipleship that's important. Because when we get gut punched, when we get laid out and filleted, how do we get back up? Number one on my thing is, this church should have every resource you need. We have one another. We have believers of the faith. And we need each other to keep going. That's why we gotta get our heart healed so we can trust one another. We have every resource we have to be an army of faith in this house. But if we lose faith in one another, we can't do what we're called to do because we're walking around guarded, we're walking around Christianese, we're walking around fake it till you make it, and we can't let it down. And I refuse to do life with a bunch of fake Christians. I'll see you in heaven. Because once you get Jesus, that's great. But if we understand what that really means while we're here on earth, let's storm the gates of hell. Let's go get everybody that we love. Let's love on them, love on them, love on them, love on them until they get healing. But if they can't get healed, some of you are just sacrificing your future, just slowing down for everybody else. God's put a destiny and a calling on your life, but we keep getting around people that want to suck the life out of you. So I just want to give you some tips really quickly here because it's so important because you have to know the enemy. You know, it says in Ephesians 6, 12, we war not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Satan uses fear and God wants you to have faith. Where do we get faith? Right here. It's injected in every Sunday, every Wednesday. If you're a man, every Tuesday morning. If you're a woman, every Thursday morning. And it could be every day if you crack this thing open. If you have any amount of fear, that just means that your level of faith, your level of word isn't higher. So when I'm talking to people in business, I always say, my certainty, if two people are coming together, they're like, hey, you're selling me, aren't you? Well, no, my certainty is like, you need what I got. And if my certainty, if I gave them 10 pounds of certainty and they had six pounds of doubt, I will win every time. But if I show up with six pounds of certainty and they show up with 10 pounds of doubt, they're gonna be walking away not wanting my services. So I become an expert in my field. Nobody is more certain about what I do than what I do. So I could bring in a level of certainty at such a high level, it would take a very strong doubter to walk out of the room and not pick up what I'm putting down. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your certainty in your field, your certainty in your belief around Jesus, your certainty in the word has everything to do with how much faith you can walk into. Yeah. See, I always, I started men's prayer out of an insecurity. I had a friend that called me because 
He knew I was going to church that believed in miracles. Well, just because I go to a church that believes in the power of the Almighty God that believes that God can heal anything doesn't mean that I was believing. Who's with me? So when my friend who didn't go to my church knew he needed a miracle to live, he called me. And I folded like a deck chair. I didn't have certainty, but I called someone with certainty, Pastor Jurgen, who didn't show up because he was on a flight to Australia. So he then put me in touch with someone with certainty. And that certainty showed up in a hospital room, and guess what? All doubters were told to leave, and the power of God hit my friend, and he was healed. Your certainty for your life, your future matters, and you gotta study it so you are not a doubter. That you are not confused. You know your calling. You know your high purpose. You have to understand that fear is a spirit that creates a feeling. You could feel fear, but you better start talking to that fear to remind that spirit that's behind the emotion to get out. And if you don't, you will fold again. You will get gut punched again. I own restaurants. I'm in the restaurant business, and I got gut punched during COVID and had to shut down my restaurants. Well, then six months later, I finally said, I had enough of this. I opened them both back up. And then I got gut punched again, where my landlord, who was totally fear-based, would not let me open. Would not let me open. But it's amazing, because I saw the evil at hand. I opened my other restaurant, chiropractic, I never shut down. My other businesses, I didn't shut down, but I had one landlord that let fear dictate. And out of this whole center, Nine of the 11 restaurants went completely out of business. That's not the gut punch part. That just happens. I was manipulated. I never, there was no clause in my lease agreement. I couldn't believe someone had that much power over me. It changed me as a business person. I got a fire on the inside of me. I didn't roll over. I didn't cry about it. I just went to war. And then I got gut punched again. It looked like I was gonna win this case against the landlord. And then some judge in California, some woke judge, Said, no, because I signed a 10-year lease. They wanted $300,000. They wanted all my rent for 10 years. I negotiated them down because one judge said, yep, you got to pay it. And this was another case that set precedent. And man, it gut punched me. And I realized, man, I could be in a world of hurt right here. And then I just prayed. And their attorney said, hey, my client is, and used words that I can't use in church. said a lot of explicitives. Here's what I'm gonna do. Let me just see if I can help you settle so he doesn't take you for everything. Because he can get 250, 300,000 out of you. Let's just settle this thing. I, I know that it doesn't feel right, but he is my client, but I wanna help you. I don't want him to know about this case. And he helped me. I still had to pay 70,000. But I learned in that, and I had two choices at this point. I got gut punched. I could cry about it. I could say, I'm never going in the restaurant business again. I could say all these things, or I could just write the check. Touche, devil. Took one of my pawns. I'm coming at you harder this time. I went into prayer, started leaning in. I'm not gonna let that one loss define me. I got gut punched, but I'm gonna get back up again. I'm gonna listen to what the word says about it. I'm not gonna let fear get bigger. I'm not gonna let my mountain, I'm not gonna let it reflect my identity. It's called a loss. I did have a core value in my life that said I don't lose money. Now what do I do? Lord, I've just said my whole life, I don't lose money. I just lost 70 grand. What do I do about that? God, why would you let this happen to me? God, why would you let this happen to me? I just realized, you know what? I'm not gonna let fear decide I'm not going back into restaurant business. I'm gonna, God, can I trust you? See, courage is forward motion in the presence of fear. I can say I'm a lion chaser, I'm bold and courageous, or I can get gut punched and then make a decision that I let fear take me out of my future, or I say, you know what? I'm gonna get up again, I'm gonna trust you again, I'm gonna put the right people around me, I'm gonna stay humble, I'm gonna lean in, I'm gonna get into the word, and I'm gonna do it again, Lord. I wanna be courageous even in the presence of fear. I know you've told me to take territory in this land. See, some of you, have lost something, but you haven't got back up again. 
Some of you have had a setback. Some of you have had debt. Some of you are in debt. We're gonna break that debt over your mind so you could see clearly again. Some of you have been overwhelmed. See, to be a leader in your family, that's why we have Emerge. It takes grit. It takes gut. God says, put on the full armor. Sometimes you gotta tighten the belt of truth. Some of you just gotta tighten the belt of truth and start speaking the truth over your family. We're gonna have a little truth today, son. We're gonna have a little truth today. We're done with the world. We're done with this stuff. We're gonna get righteous. Let's find out. Let's get you on mission. Let's find your purpose again. Some of us gotta get back to the good old days and start helping our kids figure out who their real friends are. Because there is a world that's coming in to influence your family and take your kids out. What are we gonna tolerate? What are we gonna put up with? Or are we gonna be a leader and lead our family? That's why we do Emerge. That's why we, we carve out time to come down, get under a tent, get under the stars, and just carve out time to get peaceful again as men because we are kings, which means we are providers and protectors. And I know if we've been in war a long time and we've been a provider and a protector, we've taken our licks. Emerge means you're coming down, you're gonna take off your old armor, you're gonna be given new armor. And let me tell you, my brother's new camos are way better than when he started the military 20 years ago. His old camos, I'm like, those are ugly. The new all digital camo out stuff, I steal as much as I can when I'm at his house. And it says Hubbard on it, so it's legit. I need some of you because you're standing on the edge of taking a leap of faith. And I need you to just step out in faith again and do it again. Some of you know that you want to step out, but you've been stuck in fear. You got to move. You got to move. The devil's a liar. Have real talks with your family, fresh, real, powerful. Talk about the stuff that matters. Be unoffendable. Your kids should be able to talk to you about anything. Let's not get Christianese about it. There's a war out there for our kids. And if they can't talk to us about it, who are they gonna talk to? This is the church. Our kids are gonna fall down. We're gonna pick them up again. This is a safe place. I grew up where we came around over my grandpa's house for Thanksgiving. It was all my cousins. I was the old, oldest of nine cousins, actually 11 cousins. And all the parents would sit around and say how awesome their kids were. Guess what? They're all falling apart. But they're all Christians. Like, who could have the best Christian family? Finally, I came. When I was older, probably 16, 17, I was the oldest. And I sat there, and everyone's going around the table, and they're all bragging about all their kids and their grades, and we're the best Christian family. And we go to church. We don't miss church. Oh, they went to summer camp. And I just said, this is such bull. Blah, blah, blah. Everyone froze. They've never heard a curse word at the table. I'm like, we have the fakest Christian family I've ever met. A dude, my dad stood up. I just remember, go to the room, son. I go ahead, spank me. Do whatever you want. I'm 16, dad. I'm just here to tell you the truth. All bull crap. And I'm not participating in all this fake stuff. My gr- uncle was a preacher. My other uncle, elder in a church. All us good Christian kids. They're all falling apart. But the family was in there pretending like we were all great at Thanksgiving. I was done with it. There is a war against the church. And if the church can't come get real, if the church can't just talk about, listen, my kid's over here, my kid's over there, our junior high group ought to be blown up. I see the world out here with junior hires falling off the rails right and left, which means by the time they go into high school, they're train wrecks. And yet we can't have real conversations in church. So my kid uncomfortable? Expect to fight the good fight of faith. You gotta understand we have three things. I'm gonna pray for us. We have the armor, we have the weapons, which are the blood, the word, and Jesus. You ought to not let anything intimidate you. 
If you had a revelation on the blood, the word of Jesus, you'd be putting a smack down on everything in front of you. And I'm gonna tell you, I grew up in, in, a, in a weak sauce church my whole life. But until I met Pastor Jurgen, and I felt, man, there was some power. He would get in, he'd be unafraid, unashamed to preach and pray over the book of miracles. And, and now it's called the book of miracles because of all the miracles that have come out of that thing. Unashamed, we pray for our cities. Unashamed, we pray for people. That's why we have the recovery group. Should be the biggest connect group in the church. We're all recovering from something. But the more we live a great religious Christianese life, the more you're gonna be getting your butt kicked. But the more you get into the word, the more that you know the power of Jesus, the power of his blood, the more that you start to rise up and you walk with a little identity instead of an identity crisis. And I wanna tell you that the enemy that comes to kill, steal, and destroy, when it meets a church of strength, And I know a church of strength when I see one because there's a lot of mighty men. I throw zero punches at my campus. Men's prayer, zero punches. We break addiction, pornography, we break it all because it's a real thing. 77% of all evangelicals are struggling with pornography and they just walk down. If I have a man, I said, all right, what can I pray for? And the minute he looks down, I said, look up. You believe in Jesus? He goes, yeah. Don't ever look down in front of me again. You're the son of a king. You ought to know what that ring, that signet ring, when you made that decision, your name was written in the book. But the devil has stripped your authority, so don't ever look down again. You're walking through something, you backslid, you're going through something, just look up, let's deal with it right now. But don't look down. The devil loves shame. You came to a life-giving church. We don't, We're not interested in this. We're committed to this. If you're committed to your faith, don't worry. The fruit will start to show. Judge a tree by its fruit. Worry about your family first. Worry about your kids. You know your, your family is your first connect group? Worry about your family. This is war. Worry about your family. Then lead other people. Once you're leading them well, lead a connect group, lead them well. Then get to church and elders, leaders, influencers, get on a team and start serving and lead them well. And then when you can look after the people serving on your team, that's how I look at it. I look at who's on whose team. Good, show me the fruit. If if Alex is over this many people on the team, I wanna meet all these people. I wanna see the fruit of Alex. The fruit of his leadership is in his team. Your high team? It's the fruit of their leadership. And you should just know what's going on in their world. Know about each other, care about each other, fight for one another, make sure their kids are good. Someone in this house needs meal plans, let's get some meal preps. We gotta go dig them out of the mountain up there, let's go dig them out of the mountain. If we gotta look after our brothers and sisters, let's look after our brothers and sisters. But I'm gonna tell you, don't worry about all this other stuff, worry about this stuff. Because God's working right now in this house and it will explode to the level of discipleship, the level that we humble ourselves, the level that we receive, the level that we process, the level that we heal, the level that we come to men's prayer and get real, the level that we come to women's prayer and get real, the level that we say, that's it. I don't wanna be fake anymore. I just want Jesus. I wanna know his word. I don't know it like I should because I need more weapons in my life. New levels, new devils. Started leaving a church. Listen, my life was great. And then I took on pastoring. And then, whoa, it got a little rocky. And then I took on regional level. And then all of a sudden I'm losing restaurants and 70,000. I'm like, I see what the devil's doing because I'm taking authority from him. And now that I know that I'm, he doesn't like when I take authority. See, when you, when, you, when you buy a house and you think it's territory, you're actually taking authority away from him. If this is land and he has authority over all the land, and you take it back and sanctify it, you just stole his authority. He's pissed. Devil hates it when you figure out your authority and you start taking it. Go ahead and stand to your feet. I'm over time, I'm sorry. I didn't even get to my notes, but you know what? That was for somebody. I I, Honestly, Salt Lake, you guys gotta understand something. It's like resurrection powers coming out of these dry bones. I look out and I see we're speaking to some areas where there's been some dry bones. Will these bones live? I'm asking you, will these bones live? 
You're the only one that can make that answer. God gave you free will. You have to answer it. I know what Pastor Matt and Pastor Loren are gonna say. Yeah, they will. And they're gonna prophesy, but deep down, you have to decide, will these bones live? Or am I gonna stay a victim? Am I gonna stay having pity parties? I'm telling you, some of you are having pity parties and God can't use it. He wants you to walk in power, not in pity. It's your choice today. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you. I thank you for every believer in this house. God, I don't know the journey they've been on, but they know exactly where they're at. God, I ask, Lord, that you GPS drop pin them in their heart today. God, reveal where there's been wounds in their heart that they can't move forward in. God, reveal where there's scar tissue that their heart has become hardened and cannot receive the seeds that you're trying to plant in good soil. Reveal that now. God, you're a supernatural healer. We ask for healing of their heart today. We ask for healing of their mind today to put an alarm system in their mind that when they feel fear, they catch it when it's a feeling and they learn to process it with the right people. And as they process fear, they tell the spirit of fear to leave because they now know their authority. God, I thank you, Lord, that this is a connected house, that this church is an altar to heaven that heals, that restores, that brings back identity. We break that spirit of confusion off our youth. God, we raise up some of the greatest leaders that this valley has ever seen. The greatest youth leaders, some of the greatest worship leaders. God, I thank you. And I just felt the Holy Spirit say, I am sending you some of the most creative people in all of Utah to this house. They will see different. I see some of the greatest musicians coming to this house. Some of the greatest artists, some of the greatest business minds, some of the greatest leadership, political leaders, some of the greatest voices of influence will come to this house because of what it carries. And it carries restoration, healing, and authority in the name of Jesus. Listen, with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you've never given your life to Jesus or maybe you once did, but you took it back, I wanna pray with you. I'm not to call you out but I feel like the devil is robbing you and I'm about to unleash a word to get you restored in the name of Jesus. If that you, just raise your hand. If that's you today, who am I praying for? You're like, that's it. I want, I want Jesus in my heart. I want to be restored and redeemed. Thank you. Come on, in the back. Thank you. Is there anybody else today? Come on, thank you. Is there anybody else? The devil's screaming in your ear. Just tell him to shut up. I know I've been there plenty of times. Good for those two hands. And listen, it's not about a hand that gets you raised, that gets you into heaven. It's a hard decision. Just know that you don't have to wait to church to get any of your friends or family saved. It's about a real authentic relationship with Jesus. We're gonna say a prayer and I want everyone to say it. And then I'm gonna ask the ministry team to come up and if you need prayer for anything, if you've been hearing some of that voices, that fear, whatever it may be, I want you to come get some prayer. Don't leave here with those voices screaming in your ear. Let our ministry team pray for you. You know, I call it the altar. It's where your life's altered. Sometimes if you stay in your seat, you'll stay the same. Every step towards the altar is like shoving it to the devil. Sometimes we gotta do it. But let's all say this. Can you guys say this with me? You ready? Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for my sin. Today, I ask for forgiveness. Thank you for forgiving me. I believe in you. I crush fear. I stand bold. I am courageous. I am victorious. And I believe this. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow. What an amazing word. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Hey, listen, for more information about our church, go to www.awakenchurch.com. 
or subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already and download our app. It is amazing. It is chock full of incredible messages, information about upcoming events, and you can even support our ministry if you feel so inclined. We loved having you with us today. We look forward to seeing you again. God bless you. Live a life that is transformative. Bye for now.